Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and what is happening today, sweet Stacy? Well, charming Chuck, <laughs> we have the awesome documentary and reality series narrator and one of the most respected voice of our coaches in the business, yes, Tom he is. Pinto. Are you ready to get buzzed? Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. You guys, our guest is one of the top broadcast and documentary narrators. You also hear him all over the place in commercials and network promos. And he's a very, very respected voice of our coach. We love him. We're so glad he's here. And we're ready to get buzzed with the fabulous Tom Pinto. Oh, you guys. Yeah, Tom Pinto. Tom Pinto. Thank you for uh, helping me to make the trek back to the City of Angels there. Well, Get well down, worth it. buddy. Thanks yeah. for making time for us. Oh, this is That's great. That's so this cool. Great. So did you hitchhike up here or <laughs> did you drive? or fly? Interstate 5, let's face it. The most, bo most boring <laughs> drive in the world, right? So you Here don't we go. hitchhike anymore. We heard Brown. you used to hitchhike all the time. <laughs> well, struggling musician days. Do you, oh, can right? you yes. Do you remember those yes. days? Wow. No, now he's fancy. He has a car. Yeah, of course he's fancy. Finally. He has a car. Yeah. He Finally. probably has his own personal chef, too. I, yes. I'm not like Ed Bigley Jr., who I, you know, I remember the days of living down here on Ventura Boulevard. Yeah. It's like, there he was, yep. pedaling over to CBS Radford to do a, an audition or something like that. Yeah. So. so cool, I man. I see him once in a while around. Yeah, because yeah, he lives well, Not too far. somewhere yeah. in, your, yeah. in your neck of yeah. the woods. Yeah. So. We can't get rid of him, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, Tom, yes. we're going we're gonna to discuss some stuff about you. Okay. See, mm -hmm. we happen to know it's more about you right now than you mm know about you right now Here we've we been go. we've done a little bit of research oh god and we dug deep tom <laughs> I, I think i hear harp music already <laughs> no hey man i want to ask yeah. you something so obviously man you're the narration industry you're like you know one of the go-to guys mm -hmm. on that Thank and you. there's so many people out there that you know especially nowadays and even with agencies like in-show narrations become like the hot thing right mm -hmm. so um, what are some of the skills besides, you know, being able to read and talk, what are some of the major skills that an actor would need to have in order to be a good in-show narrator? Well, you know, the one-size-fits-all narrator has gone bye-bye yeah. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. When I say a long time ago, I think the evolution started happening right about the, the millennium. And with the with the, each new cable network, it's, an, it's a cheap form of programming. Yeah. You know, right. for them to have reality series or docu series, and so, but each n network has their own brand. So, no longer do we just have to have. Uh, and I love, excuse me, I love Peter Coyote. I love yeah. Liev Schreiber. I want them to die so that we'll open up the market <laughs> a little bit. No. He doesn't really just want kidding, you to just die, kidding. guys. Uh, I really don't want to say that because my daughter works on casting on. Um, Ray Donovan, so we oh, love okay. you, Liv. We yeah. love you. Anyway. Just do more movies, Liv. Yeah, yeah. There, you, there you go. There you I'm go. Don't too have busy. I'm too oh, busy to do that. You know, Tom Pinto, yeah. it would be perfect. Uh, I think, yeah, or a Tom Pinto type. Tom yeah. Pinto type. A younger Tom Pinto. Tom yeah, the younger Tom Get me Tom Pinto. Pinto. <laughs> Who's Tom Pinto? Oh, that's uh, good. So, no, in terms of the skill set, I mean, obviously, I think, I think voice actors need to start thinking more about what they like. I mean, if you're not into alligator wrestling, you're not going to book one of those shows on A&E mm -hmm. e about the guys, you know, who wrestle the alligators, wrestle right. the alligators right. no matter how good your southern bayou drawl is, because you have to sustain the character for an entire hour. So they look for well, organic for casting. Seasons. Pardon me? For seasons. Yes, yeah. for seasons. <laughs> yeah. For so, years, yeah. maybe. So, so I tell people, I said, what do you like to watch? Start there. Don't even think about what your voice, you know, what your voice brand is. But you know what? If you like home improvement, if you then then watch DIY, you probably would be good for DIY yeah. or HGTV. If you love history, I mean, history is not your grandfather anymore. There's, no. right. you know, you got history too. So there's, a, there's, as long as you have a passion for history, they're looking for a lot of mid-range voices. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be deep and mellifluous. Right. So um, I say start by thinking about what you like. To watch mm -hmm. and then go from there because you can't be all things to all people right it's yeah. different you know I know you know as a voice actress I mean you can go in and say seven seconds to be a, a maniacal broad absolutely but if you had to sustain it for an entire hour you know maybe right. not if right. that's not you so I 
I, I tell people think about what you, what your passion is and and start start there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the age Good. demographic? Uh, do you feel or do you have you seen that they're asking or they're wanting more younger sounds or does it not matter? Is it just everything? No, th they are, and it it, it, it depends on, on the network. The you know, yeah. so yeah. so I think you know if if you're going to be doing bridezillas. You know, younger women, you of know, course. older women need not apply. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if if and for there's such a difference even between what the History Channel does and the Military Channel does. The Military Channel right. is skewing that much older. So, yeah, good sense of what's out there in the marketplace. I mean, you don't have to watch all the shows, but if you just scan through it and see what's going on, then you mm -hmm. you know what's. I, yeah. I, I've never thought that you can act in a vacuum. I, it's funny when I've taught. There are some people, maybe the first time they're in the class, and they wear it like a badge of honor. I don't, I don't watch television. Exactly! Yes, and yes! And you go, <laughs> like, okay. I wouldn't brag about that. You know, <laughs> you yeah. want to be a theat you want to you be a film actor, you, you don't right. see movies, I mean, is it, well, no, of course I do. Well, right. you know. Exactly. Get a TV, or my God, pick up your iPad or something and, and, right. and stream something. Yeah. Right, so exactly. I think I think the, the demographics have changed, um, the fact that women, uh, are doing much more narration than they did before. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. One, a gal that I went to high school with, graduated, same class, Birmingham, in your neck of the woods. That's Lynn, my school, baby. Was that your school? Yeah. I don't believe this. Okay. <laughs> Birmingham. Lynn Ann Zager. Uh, yeah. We graduated the same yep. class. She is the narrator on, you know, what is it, Deadliest Women or something like well, that? Well, Investigation Discovery yeah, exactly. has a lot of female narrators. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's really opening up. So, you know, the the barn door is open here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All, all bets are off. Yeah. In fact, one of my favorite narrators right now is Patricia Clarkson could read me the phone mm, book. Yeah. yeah. And I would listen. Yeah. That's beautiful. What about? Is it the narrator's job? See, I'm asking questions for you guys because you guys want to know this stuff. <laughs> he did his homework. Um, does the show want you, the in-show announcer, to become part of the show or to be maybe a little bit more transparent with your delivery so that they're not paying as much attention to you and more of the show and you're kind of just guiding them through it? I have a slide. It's a great question. And I know that you produce, you, I've heard a, a few of your narration demos, a lot of your other demos, but your narration demos are very good too. Thank you. But it's, it's, Thank you, Tom. it's, it's, it's sort of a Let's take applause for that. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. Hold for applause. <laughs> Let's go. clap for that. <laughs> this broadcast minute brought to you by, okay, it's sort of a sliding scale. The better the pictures, the less you have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Crappy pictures shot on almost like an iPhone, yep. handheld camera, stuff like that, probably need a little more help, mm, okay. a little more That's interpretation, a little more vibrancy to get involved, because yeah. mm. otherwise it's just going to lay there. But when you've got beautiful footage, like in Alaska, a lot of the reality series and docu series where sunrise is coming up, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, tweet, 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 you know, an elk in there. I mean, you, you don't have to do you a lot. You don't have to do much to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Be an observer. Like, don't yeah. get in the way of the, of the elk that's going through the uh, beautiful go, going through the meadow. I, I always and, and then on top of it, I always like to tell people: think visually, act vocally. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if, if you just decide, well, what am I going to sound like? I, I, you're not, I mean, they've spent so much money invested in the pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we come along, huh, I have a clever idea. I'd like to try something. And it's like, no, mm. we've got to fit into their box. Yeah. That, that's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's different. Okay, so do you still audition or did you just call oh, yeah. Tom Pinto? Oh, no. Okay, you do. There are, there are, there are certain people that will say, I want to use them, and then it happens. Mm -hmm. But still, many times it's, We'd like him to read for this. A lot of client request stuff. Okay. And and as a matter of fact, and there's no way to say this without sounding braggadocio, but uh, years ago, my agent did some general auditions for Discovery. We read various scripts. Yeah. And it turns out that I am a Discovery approved narrator. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is producing something that's going to go on Discovery, Discovery by and large will say, here are the list of people that we are fine with. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's only five or six people, but at least it does. It's six and a yeah, half, I heard. Yeah. Six and a half people. <laughs> it narrows it's like the having field. government clearance. You're yeah. on the, that's very, that's awesome. Y yes. Yeah. Wow, so yeah. you're like the CIA <laughs> in show. Oh, oh, oh. Here we, so, here we so, go. So let me ask you this. So let's say, Wire tapping. No, let's, say they, let's say you're at home it. and yes. an audition comes in mm. for Whatever, it could be, or, or maybe go through maybe the different scenarios. Maybe yeah. something's for in-show, something's for commercial, maybe there's a promo, mm -hmm. okay? 
Do you just look at the specs and read it? Do you do any research as to what their brand is or before you even do an audition? What's your process? Narration, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If I don't know anything about the show, I'll take a, I'll take a shot on Google yeah. and see if there's anything. Right. And, and find out the production company. Oh, it's Left Field Productions, great. You know, or it's Sirens Media, one of those people. I've worked for them before, or I understand what the kind of stuff they do. So you begin to kind of get an idea of, mm -hmm. especially in this whole weird, uh, not weird, but the, the generic term, we want a conversational. Well, one person's mm. conversational yeah. is another person's stiff read. Yeah. It's, it's totally subjective. So I do try to do some research, find out what I can, you know, and sometimes it could be a simple email to my agent saying, do we, do we know what network this is? Okay. Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they're, they're still in the process of selling it. Right. But some research on that would be great. Um, in terms of commercials and, and promos, I think promos, I also do more research because, man, new networks pop up yeah. all the time or they change their formats, they change their mm -hmm. style, creative directors. No, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. Now we're doing that. And also whether the show is a comedy, a dramedy, a drama, right? Exactly. And I also like the fact that promos now are becoming... Uh, not just because of all the cable networks, I'm finding that the, 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 the major networks are opening things up a little bit more and using multiple people yeah. right. as opposed to just two. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Reno Romano is a dear friend yeah. and, and a fabulous talent, and he can do a whole bunch of stuff. Yep. Right. But it was very nice to see this new show that's coming out that Ellen DeGeneres is exec producer on. It's something about first dates. Mm -hmm. The promo voice was a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. about time. Totally. Yeah. On NBC. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Uh, so I, I try to do some research, but then I also try to make sure I don't overthink things, yeah. too. So let's say you do research on one of these auditions, mm. and you're like, oh, okay, hey, I know the company, I know mm. what they like, and then you read the specs, and the specs are completely different than what you just saw. Mm. Do you give them both, or what do you do? On an in-show narration, sometimes they're look, if they're looking for a page and a half, it's hard to justify two takes. You yes. think about the number of people that are gonna yes. submit. Now, one of the tricks that I like to do is that I will go with my instinct. I'll look for the intersection between what the specs are and what I can do. And hopefully that intersection is large. Yes. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you, like in your case, you're saying it's totally different. Well, I'm saying, well, why would I be reading? I would rather that somebody hear my read and say, well, that was good, but it's not what we want, mm -hmm. as opposed to, what was he thinking? What the heck yeah. was that? You know, you yeah. know like, what, why, why, is he, why is he trying to do uh, Christopher Walken? Yeah, why is right. this guy How did this uh, guy get approved? Why is this yeah. guy, yeah, <laughs> that's what he was going to say. How did this guy get approved? <laughs> yeah, well, that's only uh, discovery. I mean, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's yeah. discovery. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I, I try not, so what I will do is go with my instincts, and then at the very end, I'll say, and here's an alternate opening. And I'll do about 15 seconds of a slightly different flavor. I see. I do that especially when they say warm conversational storyteller. Well, I think that kind of direction, that's like flour is to a cake. Every cake has flour, so it's yeah. like, well, give me something more specific. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's my way of cheating, of giving something a uh, little bit, some, a, a little bit yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's tougher on the narration auditions because uh, they're really looking for something specific. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, buddies of mine who are producers, they go, no. And I go, that was good. No, nah, but that's not, that's not, our, that's it not what we're doing. It yeah. doesn't fit. Yeah. It doesn't fit. In other words, doesn't sound like he knows about prisons. Mm. Doesn't sound like he knows about cars. That, that would be me. Yeah. You know, every time right. I have, try to do something about a car thing, I'm, I'm faking it. I'm faking <laughs> yeah, it. I'm you're faking, faking it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honda was very believable. Which... <laughs> <laughs> I believe Thank it. Thank you, darling. <laughs> but I sustained that for 30 seconds. Uh -huh. A little, di a little different true. than an hour. That's, That's true. Funny. That's true. Yeah. So the conversational. Ah. Right? Ah. I, 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 I know you have a really strong opinion <laughs> about what that actually means. Oh, thank you. Would you like to share it, I Tom? will. I, you know, it's funny. Get it off your chest, I Tom. will. I'll get it off my chest again, because two <laughs> weeks ago, I was at a conference in Atlanta, and I wasn't meaning to get into that, but somebody raised their hand and asked the question. Mm. Yeah. And I just kind of went on a rant. About yeah. it, so I'll try to be nicer about it. Can find Go on that a shorter on rant. Can yes, find shorter rant. Not forty-five is seconds. That on YouTube? <laughs> Conversational <laughs> is strictly a speech pattern. Yeah, mm -hmm. and everyone has a different speech pattern. 
If I were saying, if I were your commanding officer and I say, you need to be here there at 0400 hours because I need you to do X, Y, and Z, do you understand what I'm talking about? That's conversational for a military person. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Conversational isn't just, hi, I'm just going to throw it away and go fast because I can just do it because they want me to be real. But that's real in nothing. Yeah. It should be conversational in something. Ah. Conversational and whimsical. Conversational, compassionate, conversational and authoritative. Conversational and... And, and quizzical, conversational, and comforting. But it's conversational alone does not, dis, is not licensed to just go as quick as you can and yeah. throw away all the punctuation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because otherwise then you go, well, he sounds like an average guy, but it's just an average read and it's not floating Xfinity's boat. Yeah. See, so they want conversational, but they want conversational and special something that gets under our skin. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if something yeah. so if something says, you know, they're looking for friendly, real, conversational, mm -hmm. you're looking for deeper than that, right? You're, yeah, I think we need to challenge ourselves yeah. to do it. I even It needs a garnish. It needs a garnish. A garnish. Very there you good. go. Stacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacy, I'm going to use that. The word of the day, the garnish. And you know, I I actually <laughs> floated one of my agents, I won't say which one, but there's a regular client of the agency I'm with, and it's like, whenever you get the audition, it says, blah, 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 the usual clean conversational read. Well, one day I just wrote back, I said, <laughs> what the? clean conversational and what? And what? Is there anything? And he wrote back, well, they didn't say. And I said, well, maybe, if, like I said, I'll challenge you to give me one description. Yeah. One adjective mm -hmm. just in, in, in the future because yeah. you says clean conversational and suddenly you're introducing, what was it last time? Um, James Clapper, who's what? He was one of the NSA guys mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. Obama yeah. administration. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about a nice introduction to James Clapper? That's real clean and conversational, isn't it, Chuck? Mm -hmm. Clean mm. and conversational. Yeah, yes. sure, sure it is. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. you know, I mean, it needed some authority. So I just think that I would. That's I, the garnish. Yeah. Authority. The gar if we could just get a little bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit more. I think it would help actors, especially since we're recording in a vacuum, many of us at home. I don't know how often you're going into your agents or doing it out of a, your, your own yeah, studio, but a lot of people still, are. Yeah. And a lot of your, mm -hmm. lot of your viewers. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, are, absolutely. Are, right. Either they don't have right. agents or they're not in major markets, yeah. and so right. their agents say, here's the copy. Yep, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Go, yeah. So you're on your own. Yeah. Thank you for that, Tom. Love that. That was very informative. You're welcome. I Good love it Tom. when I get to do a show and actually learn, too. I know. Which is all the time. <laughs> um. <laughs> so good. What do you find are some of the most common, I'm going to say obstacles, that a voice actor encounters when they step in front of that microphone? There are three things I think you're talking about in the audition process, right? Mm -hmm. I'm finding that for the, especially for people recording out of a, a home setup, is objectivity, spontaneity, and selectivity. Mm. Objectivity meaning that you play, you, you, you do three, four, five, six takes, and then you keep playing it back, keep playing it back, keep playing it back. Mm. Well, I mean, you're almost like you're convincing. Deaf. Exactly. <laughs> you're tone deaf. Yeah. But you're almost like psychological. You're trying to convince yourself, well, maybe it is pretty good, pretty good. And I'm saying, look, why don't you take some of the time that you saved by not driving across town to your agents? Take a break, go water your roses, come back, hit the playback bar at a moderate volume because not everyone is as invested in your voice <laughs> as you are. Yes. And if it's boring, then it's boring. Mm -hmm. If it's over the top, it's over the top. Trust that instinct. Yeah. So give yourself r space in order to be objective. I think it's hard for all of us, but you know, if we're going to be, be recording without benefit of having a warm body to say, hey, Stacy, just can you loosen it up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to do that. Spontaneity. People think that because they can do 10,000 takes, it's okay to do 10,000 takes. It's not. Mm. You, just, you talk to producers and they say, man, the, 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 all, all these auditions, the life was sucked out of them. Yeah. Because it would, they were cut and pasted together and yep. you know, cobbled, cobbled together reads or on top of it, they'd just done so many takes that the life was gone. And that, uh, like I said, that freshness, that right off the top of your head, uh, performing feel. The other thing, and some people don't like hearing this, but I'm just 
This is you're going to say it. it. I'm going to say it. it. You're going to say it. it. Agents are throwing, and this is in particular across across the country. Agents are casting a wider net. In other words, if it says 35 to 45, you know, they're sending it to people who are 60. They're sending it to people who are 18, male, female, whatever. You know, do you do a good Morgan Freeman? No, you don't. But they, they send it to you. Just because you get it, don't do it mm. unless you excel. Because I don't think it's a good idea to get um, pigeonholed by, the, uh, by a, an ad agency as the person that does a pretty mediocre Morgan Freeman but thinks he mm. does a good Morgan Freeman. So I turn down. I would say I turn down almost, um, oh, 15 to 20% of the auditions that I get during a week. Because at this point, I think I'm either too long in the tooth, I'm not appropriate, there are a lot of funnier guys who would really book this thing. Mm. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not wasting their time, and the other thing is wasting my time. I feel like I have, between all the jobs that I have in the middle of the day, I only have so much energy for certain auditions. Right, and right. so people are going, going, they go, oh, Tom, I had a great week. I did like 50 auditions. I go, really? Mm. When? Well, I get off work, I come home, I have dinner, and then I go into my studio and I'm in there till midnight. <laughs> and then I get up in the morning, I'm going, oh, man, you need to send me some of those auditions. And, mm. and yes, and this guy sent me the auditions and they were tired. Tired. Yeah. And they all yeah. were all running together. Yeah. yeah. So I'm telling people, be selective. In other words, your batting average, if you're looking for, um, I think you need to look for a better batting average. I know that the more times you read, the odds of, of, of booking supposedly goes up, but if you're not right for it, they won't. If they're not yeah. good reads. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be one for five than one for 20, mm -hmm. yeah. in my mind, mm -hmm. and, and you know, be known for what I do. And I understand that there's a balance because people are trying to start their careers, they're trying to blossom more, right. they're, they're trying to make sure that their agents don't just see them in one light, but I, I think people need to be a little more selective yeah. overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so, good, man. Do, and has and an to make agent, sure you're sending out your very best. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Mediocre just doesn't cut it. No, it doesn't. Has, it doesn't. Has one of your agents ever said to you, uh, hey, why didn't you uh, send in that audition? Yes, yes. Occasionally they'll go, hey, are, are you going to be reading on the blah, blah, blah? And I'll say, you know what? I just thought I was a little long in the tooth. Now, my San Francisco agent might say, you know what? I've worked with these people before. And I think your particular sound will be ageless on this. And I'll go, okay, mm -hmm. you took the time. I mean, okay. I'm talking about via emails, probably not yeah, a phone Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. Um, and, and then other times uh, I'll say that and they'll go, point taken. That's, mm -hmm. that's fine. And sometimes they're stabbing at the dark. You know, if they have something real specific, it's like, uh, maybe do you do Keith Morrison? And I'll say, yeah, I do. And then other times it might be, do you do Liam Neeson? And I'll say, Half ass. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be good enough for yeah. what you guys are, are, are really looking for. You have the for. vengeance. Let part, me hear your but... Liam Neeson. I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> he how. He does the it. vengeance. No, no. It's that's what I mean. It, it's not. It's it's taken. Not. Come on, taken. something taken. got stolen no, it's from not, you. You know, I'll kill you. I'll find you. I'll kill <laughs> that's you. That's good. Yeah, I sure. like that. Do you, you want to know something though? Chuck likes all the I want to know something. Yes, Tom. <laughs> you, no. Uh, Maurice LaMarche came up to me many years ago. He yeah. was at L.A. Studios. He was waiting to do his cartoon thing. And I was sitting there and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm working on a commercial. And he goes, I want to start doing some of these commercials. I said, of course mm. you can. And he goes, well, I, I, you know, how? And I said, why don't you just think of Spoke's characters? Don't go for the laugh. I said, you've got a great ear. You're a great actor. You fooled me on the phone several times, you know, doing mm -hmm. people because you're playing it straight. Believe in yourself, you can do that. Mm. I'm turning on the TV, and I'm hearing a Lexus spot, mm. and yeah. I'm going, oh, they have a new Lexus guy. Kind of sounds like a younger version of Jim Sloyan. We used to do it for about 20 years. Yeah. And I said, I wonder who the new Lexus guy is. And then they said, it's Maurice LaMarche. I goes, that's not Maurice. I know what Maurice does, but damn yeah, it was he's it. He's animated. Yes. So, so the, point, the point is, yes. is that, you know, you can, you know, you can utilize some of these characters, you know, for, you know, for television stuff yeah. if you really think deeply enough and organic enough. And yeah. he mm -hmm. obviously, yeah, has absolutely, done it. absolutely, man. But he doesn't yeah. send me any checks for that advice. He, he, I would call him up and say, uh, but, "I need some but residuals you have to here, check baby." Your gratitude inbox. I am sure it's oh, over it's probably blowing. very full, very full. Is anyone yeah. believing this crap? That <laughs> no, 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 not at all. You have um, good karma. Good well, karma. 
Wow. You're a very generous man. Well, you know what? When you teach, anybody goes into teaching, I mean, you got you got to say you'd be willing to give. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's just yes. what it is. Absolutely. And unfortunately, there are some teachers out there who only want to take people so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there are many people that are surprised with saying, well, you're with Atlas and I'm with Atlas. Do you really feel comfortable coaching me? And I go, you know what? What's mine is mine and what's yours is yours mm -hmm. as far as the universe is concerned. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know? good. Such yeah. a better place space to live in. Is there a level of teaching that you kind of like to stick with? Like, you know, do you teach beginners or is it more intermediate? Not much or? anymore because uh, my style is a little too dogmatic and I scare people off. Mm. Yeah, no, so, I mean, that's what I, that's so what Samantha mostly was what? I'm mostly advanced individuals. You're advanced. so scary. <laughs> yeah. He is so or scary. Or somebody like when Mary Lynn Wisner has worked with someone, yeah. right. you know, who she feels is good in an area, she'll say, you know what, I think this guy also would be great for you to work on narration. So mm -hmm. okay. she's been doing that over the last couple of yeah. years, and uh, I've been able to, you know, work with some people that way. I, I think I owe it to the industry to work with also some of the up-and-comers and say, you know what, I would love to help you marry your... Believable, Spouse, I mean, no. not 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 non announced feel, but with a little bit more of what I call GAS, give a shit factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, blend the millennial read with something that's going to have some impact. That's been my current challenge. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? I mean, I, I, I worked in advertising before and I know what it's like to yeah. not get what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. You're a good guy, man. Um, so if somebody wants to coach with you and they're at, uh, you know, they kind of know what they're doing, how do they get a hold of you? I think Facebook's a great way to go. And then we could start a conversation from there. Maybe yeah. a private Message post you. on Facebook? Or do you want them just to put it out there? No, hey, private Tom. post. No, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Tom. I want to coach no, with no, you. No. Call me, Tom. Private, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> private yeah, post. Private. And, and then, uh, you know, we go go from there. Right. Cool. Right. Uh, right. And, you know, I mean, each, each uh, situation is different. But... Uh, Sometimes I'm up for a really good challenge. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So I love that. It's good Tom to know. T O M Pinto on Facebook, correct? Yes, it is. Yes. Because it's. You're an alien. You are like it's, Liam Neeson. You have like yeah, an alien. You see, it's for my familia. You'll see, right. because I have a lot of paisanos that are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah. am I bothering you? No, Does anybody no. call you Tommy? Hey, Tommy. Hey, yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Absolutely. Does I mean, that's where I grew Tom? up. What's that? Thumb? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they like to do the joke. Yeah. Uh, people call me Tommy. Uh, Rob Paulson. Mm. Calls you Tommy. All yeah. the time. Has since the day I met him. And I knew I liked him right away because oh, of the, just the way he dog. said it yeah. had had this flavor. Yes, you know, yes. and we all, yeah, absolutely. We all love Rob. We all love who doesn't very, love very Rob. Very, very cool. Paulson. So, this is like the little nutshell version. Okay. The, the color of your voice technique. Oh. Right? Yes. So, for people that are interested in kind of what is your... Methodology. Colors your is curriculum. basically is basically a visual technique to back into emotions. It's a it's also a primer. It's not like uh, there's this step, that step, that step, that step in order for you to get through a 60 second radio mm. spot. I mean, there are other people that have, you know, uh, different methodologies. I call it a kickstart, and it's all based on seriously. It's, it's based on conversations that I had with uh, my cousin Danny, who is the production designer on Days of Our Lives. Mm -hmm. And he, he was the, also an art director on the movie Twister, nominated mm -hmm. for an Oscar. Yeah, great movie. So Danny has yeah. you know, taught me a lot about, oh, well, we do this, and we do this on the shadows, and then we want, you know, if we want her to look like a tart, we put this color on her. If we want this guy to be a jerk, then we, then we do this kind of green shadow or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the manipulation of color is the same thing through commercials. And I just think that there are certain colors that bring out certain emotions. Sure. And then what I try to do also is to tell people then where are those colors in your body, you know, in, to, in order to unlock them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, go from there. And it's their own little, it, it's your own little, uh, what would you call it, shorthand. I mean, if somebody says, okay, uh, uh, you know, we'd like it a little earthier, a little folksier, but we still want it to be approachable, and you say, and you say to yourself, well, I basically want it brown with a touch of green. Now, that's me saying right, it without right. explaining it, right. but mm -hmm. that's where I can go, and I can think visually. And I would say that if I have a class of 13 people uh, going over colors, and by the way, that's I don't teach an introductory class anymore, but I do initial privates with people if they're interested in that technique. Yeah. Right. If there are 13 people taking that class, I would say that at the end of the class, 10 of the people will say, I get it. 
Three months later, eight of the people will say, I'm still working at it. Two years later, I'll have somebody come up to me and say, I booked a spot because I did that. Right. You know, so so it's one of I think it's one of the better things that I've done, but it's 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 just nature. And you as a musician, sorry, don't mean to ignore your love in this, right. but okay. You talking to me, man? Yeah. There was this where it came from, actually, is it was like 1979 or 80, there was a beautiful radio campaign for Sony audio tape, and it was about the colors of your music. Mm. Mm. And so it said, experience all the blues, and suddenly you heard a jazz trumpet yeah. player, mm -hmm. the electric reds, and suddenly the guy was wah wah on the guitar there. Yeah. She goes, in the elegance of silver, and suddenly you hear a wind chime, all on Sony audio tape. Yeah. I never mm -hmm. forgot that. But I let it kind of sit there for yeah. about four or five years, and then suddenly, I was reading a book about uh, about about therapy and stuff like that, and that they were doing experiments with colors and helping mm -hmm. people to get mm -hmm. out of their depression. Then I had conversations with my cousin. And I love that because it's really isn't it about connect being connected. It is. It's a way to. So it's you're a way connected to get from to, the inside out. Exactly, and sometimes we need something right at the top of the spot because we're not feeling. So, for example, very quickly, green is the most natural color. It's the most popular color, vocal color, I think, out there right now because people mm -hmm. are saying, give it to me, you know, warm and fresh and real and all that good stuff. So I've come up with many phrases that kind of get people to a green feel or whatever. So for me, if I simply say, it's, you know, it's just a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. That gets me to where I need mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it kind of gets me to that John Corbett zone from the character yeah. that he did in Northern Exposure. Yeah, where, yeah. where you kind of talk about Nietzsche and he reflect on the cosmos and all yeah. that. And so it was kind of an easy approachability. Then he'd go to Walgreens. And then he'd go to Walgreens. <laughs> What's another phrase for that green color? Um, um, to help you get into that green mode. Well, there's also planting some bulbs. Planting some bulbs. Planting some bulbs mm -hmm. because there's sort of an earthy green mm -hmm. about it. Um, there's also, uh, oh, the scent of the air after a spring rain. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can almost envi like yeah. you can almost smell that one after you see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so I and I try to integrate not just visuals but sometimes. <laughs> You yeah, know, scent. Yeah, scent too, yeah. like on red. I mean, you could red can be very energetic, but at the same time, red can also be it's sensual in its own way. I mean, if you're talking about like peppers and salsa, yeah, you know, you get into that mm -hmm. that kind of uh, excitement, natural excitement, yeah. which red is red is the color that is exciting. Yeah. The problem is that a lot of people think, well, red means energy, so that means I need to shout and race. I think red is needs to be appropriate for age, gender, and your interests. Yeah. I mean, if you're not into, if you're not into roller coaster rides, mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard for you to reach that kind of a red, but yeah. if you like salsa dancing, yeah. then you got that exactly. kind of red. Mm -hmm. To me, red means yeah. stop. <laughs> or you'll get a ticket. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. No, no that's wrong. okay. Everybody has their subjective I experience. Know. I'm, yes. I'm, yes. I'm messing I love around. That. So I Tom, love that. why don't you take us back and tell us a little bit about how you actually got started in this whole VO world, man. Boy, where to start? No, seriously, radio background, yeah. like, like Mr. Cipriano, like yes. Mr. Weaver, like John Leader, like so Andy Geller, a, a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but I got involved, I got off the air and was doing more production. I love the production because of the writing, the producing, and yeah. then also the voicing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a time that I thought, I was going to be the next killer guy at Hanna-Barbera. Hmm. I had a contact. My Aunt Jerry used to, uh, uh, Joe Barbera from Hanna-Barbera would always come into Sorrentino's mm -hmm. and she goes, I got a nephew. I got a nephew. He's yeah. very talented. You need yeah. to let him in. And so I had a general audition in there and I wasn't ready. Mm. Mm. And then I worked with, uh, got to be friends with Marilyn Schreffler, who was the second voice of Olive Oil. Mm -hmm. She helped put together a character demo for me. She took it to T.J. Escott, Cunningham, mm -hmm. Escott, yeah. and he said, like his commercial stuff, but he's okay on characters. I wanted to be a character, yeah. damn it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They wanted me for commercials. Not they, it ended up being other people. Right. Sutton Barth of Anari. They wanted me to be the voice, the twinkly voice. They wanted to be the guy on Capri Sun. They wanted me to be the guy on Sun Chips by Frito-Lay and all that stuff. Right. So it's like, 
well, who was I to turn down the universe? Mm -hmm. Right, right. And the cartoon stuff I got was mostly as a youthful lead. Right. I was the lead on a series called Paw Paws, and I was surrounded by all these wonderful, like Susan Blue, yep. Bob Ridgely, Scatman Crothers, Frank Welker, Don Messick, Ruth Buzzy, I mean, Howie mm, Morris, wow. and I mean, I, I, I was of, the young, yeah. straight, clean, when I say straight, meaning the straight man, so to speak, and I was surrounded by all these funny people, and it was mm -hmm. that it, during, during, during that series that I realized, if I'm doing cartoons, this is probably where it's gonna happen for me. Yeah. But mm -hmm. at the same time, other things opened up. Uh, the young movie trailer stuff, like 16 Candles and yep. mm -hmm. uh, St. Elmo's Fire and uh, Say Anything with uh, John Cusack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I just tried to go where the industry took me. Yeah. yeah. You know. Good for you, man. Well, well it's good that you, that you were flexible and fluid to say, okay, I could fight it, I could push it. Mm -hmm. Or I could surrender but I had some, and say, yeah. "Okay, maybe something knows more than me." No. I had some good. I had some good people to advise me. I mean, between Marilyn mm -hmm. Schreffler, Andre Stoika, I was in a workout group, a working pros, and I was mm -hmm. like the worst guy in there. But they needed a young voice, yeah. and he was very kind to me, <laughs> right, uh, very, right. very good to me. So uh, along the way, uh, you know, you have enough mentors to kind of point you in the right direction, which is very yes. important. And I think it's very Hugely important. important. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this: If you mm -hmm. can go back. And change something that you did or didn't do mm -hmm. when you were first mm -hmm. getting started in the VO side mm -hmm. of it. Is there anything specifically that you think you would tweak? No one's ever asked me this question, but damn it, it's right at the top of my head. Improv. Improv. Mm. I would have said, uh, I'm not going to the groundlings. I'm not doing that. No, I'd do it. You'd do it. I'd do it. You know, I just got done. Take the fear out of it. Yeah, out of yeah. It. I just yeah. got done hanging with uh, Scott Parkin in, in yep. Atlanta, and, yes. and he's just fearless. And he was oh, he getting is. people to do things that they would yeah, never yeah. do it. And he did it with alcohol too. But the point is, right. is that but the people did. But he could do did. it without. He does fine work him. sober. I can <laughs> no, but no, but he, he had a he had a bottle of tequila. <laughs> From, from the, the plane? People. He stole it from the plane? But no, I think uh, improv... That was his color work. Yes, exactly. The color, yes, of, the the amber, color of the amber The color of, of tequila. tequila. Yes. And you know, he had, that's where he got started, in radio himself. Yes, yes. You know, yes. character radio. Yes. But I, I think the improv stuff helps your comedic skills, and I think that would have helped my character work. Yes. Because you, when you read on a cartoon and they say, okay, we're looking for a young guy, blah, blah, blah. And they go, but he's got a sense of humor. We got Rob Paulson, we got Townsend Coleman, we got this person, and Tom Pinto. And it's probably between these two guys over there. <laughs> and I, excuse me, that's not false modesty. No, that, no, no, that's no, just, but that's right, just the truth. Right, it is, right. you're right, it is. And yeah. that's good that you can actually yeah. see that. That's great. Improv, improv, improv. 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 You know, you don't want to got improv. Gets you out of the way. It does, yeah. it does. You, you know, just, uh, and I think improv also helps. If for those who are working out of their home studios because mm. then they're going to be free. Exactly. Yes. And spontaneous. Yes. Beautiful. Nice. Ha. Hey, that's all we have for part one with Tom Pinto. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, make sure to come back. He is so awesome. You guys also keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We love you. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Come on. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>